sure I can't help it anyway, will you? Quite sure, thank you, Major. Saranoff and I will manage it. Yes, we'll manage it. He finds out what to do, draws up the orders, and I sign them. Division of labor. Number one, thank you. His hand is more accustomed to the sword than to the pen. It's very good of you, Blunchley. It is indeed to let yourself be put upon in this way. Sure, I can do nothing. You can stop interrupting, Paul. Huh? Hmm? Oh, <laughs> quite right, my love. Quite right. Uh, <laughs> you haven't been campaigning, my dear. <laughs> you don't know how pleasant it is for us to sit here after a good lunch with nothing to do but enjoy ourselves. Mm. Mm. One thing I want to make me thoroughly comfortable. What is that? My own coat. I don't feel at home in this one. I, I feel as if I was on parade. Oh, my dear Paul, how absurd you are about that old coat. It must be in the blue closet where you left it hanging up. I tell you, I've looked there. Am I to believe my own eyes or not? Shake off that electric bell for. Hmm? My dear, if you think the obstinacy of your sex can make a coat out of Raina's dressing gown and your waterproof and my Macintosh, you're mistaken. And that's exactly what the blue closet contains at present. Nicola, would you go to the blue closet and fetch your master's old coat? You know, the braided one he wears in the house? Yes, madam. <laughs> Catherine. Yes, Paul. I bet you any piece of jewellery you like to order from Sophia against a week's housekeeping money that the coat isn't there. Done. Oh, <laughs> oh here's an opportunity for some sport. A little bet on it. Blunchley. Hmm? I'll give you six to one. Hmm? It would be robbing you, Major. Madam is sure to be right. Well said, Switzer. Major, I bet you my best charger against an Arab mare for Raina that Nicola finds the coat in the blue closet. Oh, 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 oh. Your best Don't ch be foolish, Paul. An Arabian mare will cost you 50,000 labours. Really, Mother, if you're going to take the jewellery, I don't see why you should grudge me my Arab. Where was it, Nicola? Hanging in the blue closet, madam. Ah! Well, I'm... Paul. <laughs> I could have sworn it wasn't there. Age is beginning to tell on me. I'm getting loose in notions. Here, let me change. Excuse me, Blunchley. Sir, just don't forget, I didn't take that bet of yours. You better give that Arab steed, Raina, since you aroused her expectations. Eh, hey, Raina? Mm? <laughs> Dreaming, as usual. Assuredly, she shall not be the loser. Oh. So much the better for her. I shan't come off so cheaply, I expect. Oh, I feel at home at last. That's the last order. What? The finish? Finished. Are you, uh, you sure you've got nothing for me to sign? Not necessary. His signature will do. <laughs> As I call a, a thundering good day's work. Now, are you sure I can do nothing more? Uh... <clears throat> You had better both see the fellows that are to take these. Uh, pack them off at once mm -hmm. and show them that I've marked on the orders the time they should hand them in by. Tell them that if they stop to drink or tell stories, if they're five minutes late, they'll have the skin taken off their backs. I'll say so. And if one of them is mad enough to spit in my face for insulting him, I'll buy his discharge and give him a pension. Huh. Just see that he talks to them properly, Major, will you? Hmm? Quite right, Blunchley, quite right. Oh, uh, seriously. By the by, Catherine, you, you better come too. They'll be far more frightened of you than of me. I dare say I had better. You would only splutter at them. <laughs> what an army. They make cannons out of cherry trees, and the officers sent for their wives to keep discipline. You look ever so much nicer than when we last met. Hmm. What have you done?
done to yourself? Oh, wash, brush, good night's sleep and breakfast, that's all. Did you get back safely that morning? Quite, thanks. Were they angry at you for running away from Sergius's charge? Well, no, they were glad, because they'd all just run away themselves. <laughs> well, so made a lovely story, all that about me and my room. Oh, capital story. But um, I only told it to one of them, a particular friend. On whose discretion you could absolutely rely. Absolutely. Hmm. You told it all to my father and Sergius the day you exchanged the prisons. No, you don't mean that, do you? I do indeed, but they don't know it was in this house you took refuge. If Sergius knew, he would challenge you and kill you in a duel. Bless me. Then don't tell him. Oh, please be serious, Captain Bludgley. Can you not realise what it is to me to deceive him? I want to be quite perfect with Sergius. No smallness, no meanness, no deceit. My relation to him is the one really beautiful and noble part of my life. I hope you can understand that. You mean you wouldn't like him to find out that the story about the ice pudding was a... Oh, don't talk of it in that flippant way. I lied. I know it. But I did it to save your life. He would have killed you. That was the second time I ever uttered a falsehood. Do you remember the first time? I? No. Uh, was I present? Yes, when I told the officer that was searching for you that you were not present. True. I should have remembered it. Ah. It is natural that you should forget it first. It cost you nothing. It cost me a lie. A lie. My dear young lady, don't let this worry you. Remember, I'm a soldier. Now, what are the two things that happen to a soldier so often that he comes to think nothing of them? One is hearing people tell lies. The other is getting his life saved in all sorts of ways by all sorts of people. And so he becomes a creature incapable of faith and gratitude. Do you like gratitude? I don't. If pity is akin to love, then gratitude is akin to the other thing. Gratitude? If you are incapable of gratitude, you are incapable of any noble sentiment. Even animals are grateful. Oh, I see now exactly what you think of me. You were not surprised to hear me lie. To you, it was probably something I did every day, every hour. That is how men think of women. There was reason in everything. You said you'd only tell two lies in your whole life. Dear young lady, isn't that rather a short allowance? I'm quite a straightforward man myself, but it wouldn't last me a whole morning. Do you know, sir, that you are insulting me? I can't help it. When you strike that noble attitude and speak in that thrilling voice, I admire you. But I find it impossible to believe a single word you say. Captain Bluntschley! Yes? Do you mean what you said just now? Do you know what you said just now? I do. I? I? How did you find me out? <laughs> Instinct, dear young lady. Instinct and uh, experience of the world. Do you know, you're the first man I ever met. It didn't take me seriously. You mean, don't you, that I'm the first man who has ever taken you quite seriously? Yes. I suppose I do mean that. How strange it is that we talk to in such a way. You know, I've always gone on like that. You mean the... Uh... I mean the noble attitude and the thrilling voice. <laughs> <laughs> well, I did it as a tiny child to, to my nurse. She believed in it. I do it before my parents. They believe in it. I do it before Sergius. He believes in it. Yes, he's a little in that line himself, isn't he? Oh, do you think so? Oh, you know him better than I do. I wonder. I wonder, is he? If I thought that. Ah, oh, well, what does it matter? I suppose now you've found me out, you'll despise me. Oh, no. My dear young lady, no, no, no. A thousand times no. It's part of your youth, part of your charm. I'm like all the rest of them. The nurse, your parents, Sergius. I'm, I'm your infatuated admirer. Really? Hunt Alf's hats, really and truly. But what did you think of me for giving you my portrait? Your portrait? You never gave me your portrait. You mean to say you never got it? No. Well, when did you send it to me? I did not send it to you. It was in the pocket of that coat. Oh, I never found it. It must be there still. There still? For my father to find the first time he puts his hand in his pocket? Oh, how can you be so stupid? Well, it doesn't matter. I suppose it's only a photograph. How can he tell who it was intended for? 
Tell him he put it there himself. Oh, yes, that is so clever, isn't it? Oh, what am I going to do? Ah, I see. You wrote something on it. That was rash. Oh, to have done such a thing for you, who gave no more except to laugh at me. Are you sure nobody has touched it? Well, I can't be quite sure. I couldn't carry it about with me all the time. One can't take much luggage on active service. So what did you do with it? Uh, when I got through to Pirot, I had to put it into safekeeping somehow. I thought of the railway cloakroom, but uh, that's the surest place to get looted in modern warfare. So, uh, I pawned it. Pawned it? I know it doesn't sound very nice, but it was much the safest plan. I redeemed it the day before yesterday. Well, heaven only knows whether the pawnbroker cleared out the pockets or not. You have a low shopkeeping mind. You think of things that would never come into a gentleman's head. And that's the Swiss national character, dear lady. Oh. I wish I'd never met you. For you, the messenger is waiting. Uh, will you excuse me? Uh, the last postal delivery that reached me was three weeks ago. These are the subsequent accumulations. Huh? Four telegrams a week old. Oh. Bad news. Bad news? My... My father's dead. Oh, how very sad. Yes. I shall have to start for home within the hour. He has left a lot of big hotels behind him to be looked after. Here's a whacking letter from the family solicitor. Great heavens. Two hundred... Four hundred... Four thousand... Nine thousand six hundred... Well, what am I to do with them all? Nine thousand hotels? Hmm? Oh, no. Nonsense. If only you knew. Oh, it's too ridiculous. Will you excuse me? I, uh... I must give my fellow orders about leaving. He's not much heart, that Swiss. He's not a word of grief for his poor father. Grief? A man who's been doing nothing but killing people for years. What does he care? What does any soldier care? Major Saranoff has been fighting too, and he has plenty of heart left. I thought you wouldn't get much feeling out of your soldier. I've been trying all the afternoon to get a minute alone with you, my girl. Why, what fashion is that of wearing your sleep, child? My own fashion. Indeed. If the mistress catches you, she'll talk to you. Is that any reason why you should take it on yourself to talk to me? Tom, don't be so contrary with me. I have some good news for you. <gasps> ah, see? Twenty labours. Serge just gave me that. Out of pure swagger, all in his money, soon parted, and there, ten labours more. The Swiss gave me that for backing up the mistresses and Raina's lies about him. He's no fool, he isn't. Well, you should have heard old Catherine downstairs, as polite as you pleased to me, telling me not to mind the Major being a little impatient, as they knew what a good servant I was. After making a fool and a liar of me before them all. The twenty shall go to our savings, and you shall have the ten to spend. If you'll only talk to me so as to remind me that I'm a human being. I get tired of being a servant occasionally. Yes. Sell your manhood for 30 labours and buy me for 10. Keep your money. You were born to be a servant. <laughs> I was not. When you set up your shop, you will only be everybody's servant instead of somebody's servant. Ah, wait till you see. We shall have our evenings to ourselves. And I shall be master in my own house, I promise you. You shall never be master in mine. You have a great ambition in you, Luca. Remember, if any luck comes to you, it was I that made a woman of you. 
You. Yes, me. Who was it made you give up wearing a couple of pounds of false hair on your head and reddening your lips and cheeks like any other Bulgarian girl? I did. Who taught you to trim your nails, keep your hands clean, be dainty about yourself like a fine Russian lady? Me. Do you hear that? Me. I've often thought that if Raina were out of the way and you're just a little less of a fool and so just, just a bit more of one, you might come to be one of my grandest customers. Instead of only being my wife and costing me money. I believe you would rather be my servant than my husband. You would make more out of me. Oh, I know that soul of yours. Never you mind my soul. But just listen to my advice. If you want to be a lady, your present behavior to me won't do at all. Unless when we're alone. It's too sharp and impudent. And impudence is a sort of familiarity. It shows affection for me. Mm. And don't you try being high and mighty with me either. You're like all country girls. You think it's genteel to treat a servant the way I treat a stable boy. That's only your ignorance. And don't you forget it. And don't be so ready to defy everybody. Act as if you expected to have your own way. Not as if you expected to be ordered about. The way to get on as a lady is the same as the way to get on as a servant. You've got to know your place. That's the secret of it. And you may depend on me to know my place if you get promoted. Think it over, my girl. I'll stand by you. One servant should always stand by another. Oh, I must behave in my own way. You take all the courage out of me with your cold-blooded wisdom. Put those logs on the fire. That's the sort of thing you understand. <laughs> Just we probably want some food, right, sir? Mm. I'm not in the way of your work, I hope. Oh, no, sir. Thank you kindly. I was only speaking to this foolish girl about her habit of running up here to the library whenever she gets the chance mm. to look at the books. It's the worst of her education, sir. It gives her habits above her station. Make that table tidy, Luca, for the Major. Let me see, is there a mark there? Does it hurt? Yes. Shall I cure it? No. You cannot cure it now. Sure. Don't trifle with me, please. An officer should not trifle with a servant. That was no trifle, Luca. Oh. Are you sorry? I am never sorry. I wish I could believe a man could be as unlike a woman as that. I wonder, are you really a brave man? Yes, I am a brave man. My heart jumped like a woman's at the first shot. But I found in the charge that I was brave, yes. That at least is real about me. Did you find in the charge that the men whose fathers are poor like mine were any less brave than the men who are rich like you? Not a bit. They all slashed and yelled and cursed like heroes. Sure, the courage to rage and kill is cheap. My English bull terrier has as much of that sort of courage as the whole of the Bulgarian nation and the whole of the Russian nation at its back. But he still lets my groom thrash him all the same, don't you? Mm -hmm. Ah, that's your soldier all over. No, Luca. Your poor men can cut throats, but they're afraid of their officers. They put up with insults and blows. They stand by and see one another punished like children, aye. And help to do it when they're ordered. And the officers, well, I'm an officer. Oh, give me the man that will defy to the death any power on earth or in heaven that sets itself up against his own will and conscience. He alone is the brave man. 
How easy it is to talk. Men never seem to grow up. They all have schoolboys' ideas. You don't know what true courage is. Indeed. I am willing to be instructed. Look at me. How much am I allowed to have my own will? I have to get your room ready for you to sweep and dust, to fetch and carry. How could that degrade me if it did not degrade you to have it done for you? But if I were Empress of Russia, above everyone in the world, then, oh, then, though according to you I could show no courage at all, you should see. You should see. What would you do, most noble empress? I would marry the man I loved, which no other queen in Europe would have the courage to do. If I loved you, though you would be as far beneath me as I am beneath you, I would dare to be the equal of my inferior. Would you dare as much if you loved me? No. If you felt the beginnings of love for me, you would not let it grow. You would not dare. You would marry a rich man's daughter because you would be afraid of what people would say to you. You lie, it is not so by all the stars. If I loved you and I were the Tsar himself, I would place you on the throne by my side. Oh. You know that I love another woman. A woman as high above you as heaven is above earth, and you are jealous of her. I have no reason to be. She will never marry you now. The man I told you of has come back. She will marry the Swiss. The Swiss? A man worth ten of you. Then you can come to me, and I will refuse you. You're not good enough for me. I please with you. The Swiss will kill you, perhaps. He has beaten you in love. He may beat you in war. Do you think I believe that she whose worst thoughts are higher than your best ones is capable of trifling with another man behind my back? Do you think she would believe the Swiss if you told her now that I am in your arms? Damnation! Oh, damnation! Mockery! Oh, mockery! Everywhere! Everything I think is mocked by everything I do! Coward! Liar! Fool! Shall I kill myself like a man or live? I pretend to laugh at myself. <laughs> Luca, remember you belong to me. What does that mean? An insult. It means that you love me. And I have had you here in my arms, and perhaps we'll have you there again, whether that is an insult. I neither know nor care. Take it as you please. But... I will not be a coward and a trifler. If I choose to love you, I dare marry you in spite of all Bulgaria. If these hands ever touch you again, they shall touch my affianced bride. Oh. We shall see whether you dare keep your word. And take care. I will not wait long. Yes, we shall see. And you will await my pleasure. Afternoon, Luca. Captain Bluntschli. That's a remarkable looking young woman. Captain Bluntschli, you have deceived me. You are my rival. I brook no rivals. At six o'clock, I shall be in the drilling ground on the Clisura Road alone on horseback with my sabre. Do you understand? Oh, thank you. That's a cavalryman's proposal. I'm in the artillery and I have the choice of weapons. If I come, I shall bring a machine gun. 
And there shall be no mistake about the cartridges this time. Take care, sir. It is not our custom in Bulgaria to allow invitations of that kind to be trifled. Who? Don't talk to me about Bulgaria. You don't know what fighting is. But have it your own way. Bring your saber along. I'll meet you. Well said, Switzer! Shall I lend you my best horse? No, damn your horse. Thank you all the same, my dear fellow. I shall fight you on foot. Horseback's too dangerous. I don't want to kill you if I can help it. I have heard what Captain Bunchy has said, Sergius. You are going to fight. Why? What about? I don't know. He hasn't told me. Better not interfere, dear young lady. No harm will be done. I've often acted as a sword instructor. He won't be able to touch me and I'll not hurt him. Ah! It will save explanations. In the morning I shall be off home and you'll never see me or hear of me again. You and he will then make it up and uh, live happily ever after. Never said I wanted to see you again. Ah! That is a confession! What do you mean? You love that man? Sergius. You allow him to make love to you behind my back just as you treat me as your affianced husband behind his, Captain Brunchley. You knew our relations and you have deceived me. It is for that that I call you to account. Not for having received favours that I never enjoyed. Stuff, nonsense. I've received no favours. Why, the young lady doesn't even know whether I'm married or not. Who are you? You see? The young lady's concerned, Captain Brunchley. Oh, Denial is useless. You have enjoyed the privilege of being received in her own room late at night. Yes, you blockhead. She received me with a pistol at her head. Your cavalry were at my heels. I'd have blown out her brains if she'd uttered a cry. Brunchley! <sighs> Raina, is this true? Oh, how dare you! How dare you! Apologize, man, apologize. I never apologize! This is the doing of that friend of yours, Captain Blunchley. It is he who has been spreading this horrible story about me. No, nope, he's dead, burnt alive. Burnt alive? Hmm. Shot in the hip in a woodyard and couldn't crawl out. Your fellow mm. shells set the timber on fire and burnt him with half a dozen other poor devils in the same predicament. Oh. How horrible. Ha! And how ridiculous! Oh, war, war, the dream of patriots and heroes. Mm. A fraud, Blunchley. A hollow sham, like love. Dare say that before me? Come, Sir Arnoff, that matter is explained. A hollow sham, I say! Would you have come back here if nothing had gone between you except at the muzzle of your pistol? Raina is mistaken about your friend who was burnt. He was not my informant. Who then? Ah, oh, Luca! My maid! My servant! You were with her this morning, all that time after. After. Oh, what sort of God is this I've been worshipping? Do you know, I looked out of the window this morning as I went upstairs to have another sight of my hero. And I saw something I did not understand then. You were making love to her. You saw that? Only too well. Raina! Our romance is shattered. Life's a fuss. Mm. You see? He's found himself out now. Blunchley. I have allowed you to call me a blockhead. You may now call me a coward as well. I refuse to fight you. Do you know why? No. But it doesn't matter. I didn't ask the reason when you cried on, and I don't ask the reason now that you cry off. I'm a professional soldier. I fight when I have to, and I'm very glad to get out of it when I haven't to. You're only an amateur. You think fighting's an amusement. Well, you should hear my reason all the same. My professional. <laughs> the real reason is, it takes two men, real men. Men of heart and blood and honor to make a genuine combat. I could no more fight with you than make love to an ugly woman. You've got no magnetism. You're not a man, you're a machine. <laughs> Quite true. Quite true. I uh, always was that sort of fellow. I'm really very sorry. But uh, now that you've found out that life isn't a farce, but something quite sensible and serious, well, what further obstacle is there to your happiness? You are very solicitous about my happiness and his. Have you forgotten his new love, Luca? It is not you he must fight now, 
but his rival, Nicola. Rival? <laughs> yes, do you not know that they are engaged? Nicola? <laughs> Our fresh abyss is opening? Nicola! Ah! Yes, a shocking sacrifice, isn't it? Such beauty, such intellect, such modesty, wasted on a middle-aged servant man. Oh, really, Sergius? You cannot stand by and allow such a thing. It would be unworthy of your chivalry. Viper! 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 Okay, Sir Arnoff, you're uh, getting the worst of this. Do you realise what this man has done, Captain Bludgeley? He has set that girl as a spy on us, and her reward is that he makes love to her. False! Monstrous! Monstrous! Do you deny that she told you about Captain Bluntley being in my room? No, but I... Do you deny that you were making love to her when N she told you? No, but I tell you... It I... is unnecessary to tell us anything more. That is quite enough for us. I told you you were getting the worst of it, Sir Arnold. Tiger Cat! Mm! Do you hear this man calling me names, Captain Bluntley? Well, what else can he do, dear lady? He must defend himself somehow. Come now, don't quarrel. What good does it do? Engaged to Nicola. Well, Bluntsley, you were right to treat this huge imposture of a world coolly. I dare say you think that's a couple of grown-up babies, don't you? <laughs> he does, he does. Swiss civilization, nurse-tending Bulgarian barbarism. Eh, hey, Bluntsley? Uh, not at all, I assure you. I'm just very glad to get you two quieted. There, there. Now, uh, let's be friendly and talk this over in a pleasant sort of way. Where is this other young lady? Listening at the door, probably. I will prove that that, at least, is a calumny. <gasps> ah! Judge her, Blutchley! You, the cool, impartial man, judge the eavesdrop... Oh, I mustn't judge her. I once listened to myself outside a tent when there was a mutiny brewing. It's all a question of the degree of provocation. Mm? My life was at stake. My love was at stake. I am not ashamed. Your love? Your curiosity, you mean. My love, stronger than anything you can feel, even for your chocolate cream soldier. What does that mean? It means... Oh, that... I remember the ice pudding, a paltry taunt girl. Excuse my shirt, Steve, sir, gentlemen. <laughs> right, Ina? Somebody must be wearing that coat of mine. Somebody with a differently shaped back. Hmm? Four birds open at the sleeves. Your mother is bending it. And we should make haste. I shall catch gold. What is the matter? No. No. Nothing. Nothing. That's all right. What is the matter, Luke? No, sir. That's all right. Uh, go to your mistress and pass my coat like a good girl, will you? Here it is, Papa. Give it to me, Nicola. And do you put some more wood on the fire? Going to be very good to poor old Papa just for one day after his return from the wars, eh? Now, how could you say that to me, oh, Papa? Just a joke, my little one. Give me a kiss. I'll give you my cake. No, no, no. I'm going to put it on for you. Turn your back. There. Comfortable, dear? <laughs> Quite, my little one. Quite. <laughs> I found something funny. What's the meaning of the... Hello. I could have sworn. I wonder what... Ah, your mother's taken it. Taken what? Your photograph with an inscription. By Ina, to her chocolate cream soldier, 
A souvenir. <laughs> There's more to this than meets the eye. And I'm going to find it out. Nicola. Sir. Did you spoil any pastry of Miss Rainus this morning? You heard Miss Raina say that I did, sir. I know that, you idiot. Was it true? I'm sure Miss Raina is incapable of saying anything that is not true, sir. Are you? Then I'm not. Come. Do you think I don't see it all? Hmm? <laughs> Sergius, you're the chocolate cream soldier, aren't you? I? A chocolate cream soldier? Certainly not. Not? Do you mean my Ina sends things like that to other men? The world is not such an innocent place as we used to think it, Petcom. Ah, uh, it's all right, Major. I'm the chocolate cream soldier. The gracious young lady saved my life by giving me chocolate creams when I was starving. <laughs> Shall I ever forget their flavour? My late friend Stoltz told you the story at Pirot. I was the fugitive. Shh. Sergius, do you remember how these two women went on this morning when we mentioned it? Ah. Oh. You are a nice young woman, aren't you? Major Saranoff has changed his mind. And I did not know that Captain Blunchy was married when I wrote that on the photograph. I'm not married. You said you were. I did not. I positively did not. I never was married in my life. Why, Ida, will you kindly inform me, if I'm not asking too much, which of these gentlemen you are engaged to? To neither of them. This young lady is the object of Major Saranov's affections at present. Luca! Sergius! Are you mad? This girl's engaged to Nicola. I beg your pardon, sir. There is a mistake. Luca is not engaged to me. Not engaged to you? You stand Well, you had 25 labours from me on the day of your patrol. And this girl had a guilt bracelet for Miss Raina. We gave it out so, sir, but it was only to give Luca protection. Or she had a soul above her station. And I have been no more than her confidential servant. I intend, as you know, sir, to set up a shop later on in Sophia. And I look forward to her custom and recommendation. Should she marry into the nobility? Well, I'm... This is either the finest heroism or the most crawling baseness. Which is it, Bludgeley? Hmm. Never mind whether it's heroism or baseness. Nicola's the ablest man I've met in Bulgaria. I'll make him manager of a hotel if he can speak French and German. I have been insulted by everyone here. You set them the example. You owe me an apology. I... It's no use. He never apologises. Not to you. His equal and his enemy. To me, his poor servant. He will not refuse to apologize. You're right. Forgive me. I forgive you. makes me your affianced wife. Ah! I forgot that. You can withdraw if you like. I... Withdraw? Never. You belong to me. <gasps> what does this mean? It would appear, my dear, that Sergius is going to marry Luca instead of Raida. No, no, don't blame me. I have nothing to do with it. Marry Luca? Sergius, you are bound by your word to us. Nothing binds me. Saranoff, your hand, my congratulations. These heroics of yours have their practical side, after all. Gracious young lady, the best wishes of a good Republican. Luca, you've been telling stories. I have done Raina no harm. Raina? I have a right to call her Raina. She calls me Luca. I told Major Saranoff she would never marry him if the Swiss gentleman came back. I thought you were fonder of him than of Sergius. You know best whether I was right. <sighs> what nonsense. I, I assure you, my dear Major, my dear Madam, the gracious young lady simply saved my life, nothing else. She never cared two straws for me. <sighs> Why, bless my heart and soul, look at the gracious young lady and look at me. She, rich, young, beautiful, with... Had imagination full of fairy princes and noble natures and cavalry charges and goodness knows what. And I, a commonplace Swiss soldier who hardly knows what a decent life is after 15 years of barracks and battles. A vagabond. 
A man who spoiled all his chances in life through an incurably romantic disposition. Uh, uh, excuse me, Bludgeley. Hmm? What did you say had spoiled your chances in life? An incurably romantic disposition. Ah. I ran away from home twice when I was a boy. I went into the army instead of into my father's business. I climbed the balcony of this house when any other man of sense would have dived into the nearest cellar. I came sneaking back here to take another look at the young lady when any other man my age would have, would have sent the coat back. My coat? Yes, that's the coat I mean. Would have sent the coat back and gone quietly home. Do you suppose I am the sort of fellow a young girl falls in love with? Why, look at our ages. I'm 34. I don't suppose the young lady is much over 17. All that adventure, which was life or death to me, was only a schoolgirl's game to her. Chocolate creams and hide and seek. Here's the proof. Now I ask you, would a woman who took the affair seriously have sent me this and written on it, Raina, to her chocolate cream soldier, a souvenir? <laughs> That's what I was looking for. How the deuce did it get there? I have put everything right, I hope, gracious young lady. I quite agree with your account of yourself. You are a romantic idiot. Next time, I hope you will know the difference between a schoolgirl of 17 and a woman of 23. 23? Hmm. Ah, Blunchley, my one last belief is gone. Your sagacity is a fraud like everything else. You've less sense even than I. Ah. 23. 23. In that case, Major Petkov, hmm? I beg to propose formally to become a suitor for your daughter's hand in place of Major Soranov, retired. You dare! If you were 23 when you said those things to me this afternoon, I shall take them seriously. I doubt, sir, whether you quite realise my daughter's position. Or that of Major Sergei Soranov, whose place you propose to take. The Petkovs and the Soranovs are known as the richest and most important families in the country. Our position is almost historical. We can go back for 20 years. Never mind all that, Catherine. We'd be only too happy. Thank you, you question your position, but hang it all, you know. Raina is accustomed to a very comfortable establishment. I mean, Sergius has 20 horses. But who wants 20 horses? We're not going to keep a circus. My daughter, sir, is accustomed to a first-rate stable. Oh, shh, Mother, you're making me ridiculous. <clears throat> oh, well, if it comes to a question of establishment, here goes. How many horses did you say? Twenty, noble Switzer. I have two hundred horses. How many carriages? Three. I have seventy. Twenty-four of them will take twelve inside, besides two on the box, not counting the driver and conductor. How many tablecloths have you? Well, how the deuce should I know? Have you four thousand? No. <laughs> I have. I have nine thousand six hundred pairs of sheets and blankets with uh, two thousand four hundred eiderdown quilts. I have ten thousand knives and forks. And the same quantity of dessert spoons. I have six palatial establishments besides two livery stables, a tea gardens and a private house. I have uh, four medals for distinguished services. I have the rank of an officer and the standing of a gentleman. And I have three native languages. Show me any man in Bulgaria who can offer as much. Are you the emperor of Switzerland? My rank is the highest known in Switzerland. I am a free citizen. In that case, Captain Blunchley, since you are my daughter's choice... He's not. I shall not stand in the way of her happiness. That is Major Petkoff's feeling also. <laughs> oh, I should say so. Two hundred horses? <laughs> Phew! <laughs> what says the lady? The lady says he can keep his tablecloths and his omnibuses. I'm not here to be sold to the highest bidder. I won't take that answer. I appeal to you as a fugitive, a beggar, and a starving man. You accepted me. You gave me your hand to kiss, your bed to sleep in, and your roof to shelter me. I did not give them to the Emperor of Switzerland. That's just what I say. Now, tell us whom you did give them to. My chocolate cream soldier. <laughs> That'll do. Thank you. Time's up, Major. You've managed those regiments so well, you're sure to be asked to get rid of some of the infantry of the Timok Division. Send them home by way of Lompalanka. Saranov. 
Don't get married until I come back. I shall be here punctually at five in the evening on Tuesday fortnight. Gracious ladies, good evening. Mm. 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 What the?